Now, there's lots of different names of funds out there and it can get pretty confusing, but actually you can split them broadly into two different approaches to investing. So in this episode, we're gonna break down those two different approaches so that you have a bit more confidence in selecting the funds that are best for you in your portfolio. So the four names of different types of funds that you see in the video title, so funds, ETFs, index funds, and investment trusts, they group together into basically two different types of fund, two different types of approach. One is actively managed and the other is passively managed. Let's look at actively first, and the clue is very much in the question here. Actively managed funds are run by a fund manager, human being who makes decisions about what investments go in the portfolio. So active funds basically break down into two different types, open-ended and closed-ended. Open-ended funds in the UK tend to be called unit trusts or just open-ended investment companies or OICs, and in the US they're also known as mutual funds. Closed-ended funds in the UK are investment trusts or investment companies. So for both of those types, a fund manager selects investments according to a mandate. That's basically just a set of rules which says what the fund can and can't invest in. So if the fund manager is mandated to invest in large UK companies, they're going to pick shares from the FTSE 100, the largest 100 companies in the UK. Now with active funds, of course, you're paying for an investment professional to select investments. And what you get is usually a lot of expertise and a lot of resources that they can access in order to hopefully make the right decision. For example, when it comes to a company, they're gonna be thinking very, very hard about that business case for the company. They're also gonna be thinking and researching the management team and check they're the right sorts of people to be making those decisions for the company. And then there's the financials, checking that the balance sheet is nice and solid, it's profitable, it's got plenty of cash. What fund managers can also do is give an extra bit of scrutiny and get management teams into the building. They can call meetings in order to really haul management over the coals and check that there's no cracks in their argument. Once an investment professional is happy that that investment is a good one and right for the fund, then they'll take a chunk of the fund's money and they'll form a position in the fund by buying that investment. Now, as we said in a previous video, funds are diversified across a number of different positions and normally for a fund this is somewhere between 40 and 60 positions although some funds have many more than that and some funds have far fewer. All you need for a fund to perform well is for more of its investments to be going up than not which is actually more difficult than you think it is. The fund manager will be seen to be doing well if their fund is beating the benchmark index it's compared against, which generally tends to represent the broader market the fund manager is selecting investments from. So it gives you an idea of whether or not they're picking winners from that market. So that is active, what about passive? Well, the first thing to note is that a passive fund does not have a fund manager. It just copies the index. The index is just a list of companies that make up a particular market. So a FTSE 100 passive fund will just buy the same 100 companies that are in the FTSE 100. One implication of that is that the passive fund doesn't discriminate between good and bad companies. You'll just get all of the companies in that index. And that means that the performance of your passive fund will broadly match what happens with the index. Passive funds break down into two types, exchange traded funds and index funds in the US or trackers in the UK. Again, we'll explain the differences between those two in a future episode. Passively managed funds are attractive for a couple of reasons. The first is that there's quite a lot of evidence out there that shows many actively managed funds underperforming the index that they're benchmarked against over time. It's actually quite hard to beat that index when you take away the costs of investing. And it's why fund managers with great long-term performance tend to have very loyal investors in their funds. 
The second reason is the really important one. Passively managed funds are much cheaper than actively managed ones where you've got to pay for the services of an investment professional. And this is important because high fees can really erode the value of your investments over the long term. So which is best, active or passive? Well, we think the answer is a blend of both. Active fund managers give you the potential for outperformance. Passive funds give you low costs. So blending the two in a portfolio mitigates the risk of each and actually provides the benefits of both. The potential for outperformance at a lower overall portfolio cost. What we've learned is that there's loads of names out there, but broadly there are two types of funds. There are actively managed funds, which use an investment professional to select investments so that hopefully it performs better than the index it is compared against, but they come at a higher cost when you compare them to passively managed funds, which have no investment professional. They simply copy what is an index and give you those investments at a much cheaper fee. If you want any more tips on how to choose a fund and a fund manager, we've got a video that covers exactly that. You'll find it in our channel. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.